Okay. Thou shalt not make eye contact. Right? And uh, you know, blocking the screen you can also add to the mystery. So you know the people who <laughs> actually uh, you know it's it's nice because look, I don't know you, but I'm very comfortable with my work over there. And you know, I'm behind the going. <laughs> Thou shalt not skip flights in a long talk. Uh, you know, you had all these flights, uh, you came prepared for them. So what do you do? You can either just decide, okay, there are two things. You can just go faster, or if it's important enough, you just keep going on and on, because people will just, just sit and listen to you. Uh, and you can always skip your summary and conclusions, so that's nine. So this is uh, long talks, keep going beyond the time. And finally, the last one is the most important one. Commandment number 10. You can break all the other ones. The last one is still guaranteed to save you. And that is thou shalt not practice. <laughs> now why waste, I mean, you know, if it's, you have only 8 weeks as a BSRP to do some research over here, why waste that time preparing a talk? Come on. You at least you might do some experiment in the lab perhaps or, you know, go and walk on the seashore. But practicing a talk will be no way. I mean, you can't appear spontaneous and, you know, come up with some jokes and all if you are practicing. So these are your 10 commandments from Patterson and they are usually uh, guaranteed to give you uh, results and uh, often, uh, you know, uh, people are uh, uh, quite happy to listen to your talks uh, because it gives them an opportunity to do um, lots of interesting things. Uh, okay, now instead of this, I assume that you would rather have that. Um, you might actually want to keep people interested in what you are doing. You may not be able to be a presentation, but in general if you are giving a scientific talk, you actually might, you know, uh, give people something more than what they had thought of before. They come back or they listen to you and, you know, feel good at the end of it that they learned something or they can actually do something more about it. In fact, some of the people who are evaluating you will wonder if you join the end. Uh, okay. But we won't actually be thinking about this, I know, in nature, we won't think about this about, you know, maybe, I don't know, two days, one day, sometime before your seminar. And then when you have a, a lot of stress, I need to get my talk done, what do you do? So, here are some things which I think you should understand. You should understand three things about any presentation, anything. If you're giving a talk, and a talk, you know, not a political speech. Uh, there are three things. There is strategy, structure and style. Strategy means why am I giving the talk? What is the meaning of this? Why are we trying to do this? So if you are giving a talk at the end of the VSRP, that's one thing. You might be giving a talk trying to get a job somewhere. But you could be talking about exactly the same thing, but the purpose is different. In one case, you know, maybe you are giving a, uh, something where people are going to listen to your talk and give you a number of 100 at the end of it. In the other case, you are going to be you are know, trying to sell yourself, you are advertising yourself so you can get a job and you want people to hire you. You could be teaching a class, you know, conveying information where it's important to get into the details. So every talk is going to be different depending on who you listen to. Right? And you need to tell a story. Look, we don't like to listen to data. Okay? As you grow up, right from when we are kids, when we are babies, right, we are programmed to listen to stories. Your mother, your grandmother, your mother tells you a story. You listen to the story. What happens in the story? Something happens in the story. Listen to a child. Then what happens? What happens next? Right? You need to keep it interesting. You need to keep it interesting so that there is a sort of thread that runs through it that connects everything. It's not haphazard bits of information that are presented. Okay? And this requires you to be organized and have these things called slides and you know whatever whatever data you might need. And also you need to be sort of alive. You know, it's no fun going there and watching somebody who's going to stand and give a talk about the work. Right? So you need to be, people out there should be fall asleep. You need to be aware that you are communicating with them and you need to be aware that they're actually, you know, listening to you and, and you have some idea of, of uh, what is going on and this comes in, in many ways. Okay, you need to know your audience. So for the first one, in order to be able to, assuming that this is a BSRP seminar you're giving, you must keep in mind that your audience has to listen to a lot of talks. They may not be the first speaker. So they'll be tired. Yeah. They might be tired. But they cannot read. So if you put that stuff on the screen with pages of things, they would rather read that. Okay. 
On the other hand, they would probably not have read your report. Because they would have got the reports, you would have submitted them late, you would have got them the day before or the day before, and you know, read so many reports and I'm going to give you anyway. So they may not have read your report completely. And they are going to think about why should I listen to this? First thing is I need to be able to make sure that you are sufficiently interesting enough that I should listen to you. And remember that you are all working in fields which are very different and it's not the same person from exactly your field which is going to be sit there, which is why the non-experts in there will think now and do this. Okay? The first two minutes is what you have to get your people together and you know, the experts will think out of the time. <laughs> okay, so what do you do? What do you do? You keep it simple. Keep it short and simple. Okay? Get a few points across. You may have done lots of things. Choose one or two of them which are the important ones and just decide I will tell you these two things. I've done all of this but I'll tell you only these. Maybe you've done only a little bit, it doesn't matter, but in case you've got lots of work, just stick to one or two things. And remember this, we have to hammer it in. Right? So first thing you will tell the new boss, this is what I will tell you about. Tell them that and say, hey, by the way, this is what I told you. <laughs> okay? So you must really make sure that you have one point or two points which are the take home messages like, can you drive that in? Okay? And you must ensure that you have some feedback saying, yeah, okay? Because if not, you stop and make sure that they get got it rather than going on without people understanding. Okay. So generally, if you have 20 minutes and if you have something where you work and you got some results and you are talking about results, uh, this is kind of a summary which, which you don't have to follow this. Okay, let me say a bit about this. This is something which I just mean, I thought out it kind of works. <coughs> you have one slide which is your title and all that stuff. The thing is, the first, remember you have the first minute where you need to connect to them. In that first minute, if they can't get what you are doing or why they should listen to you further, there are lots of things you can do. So, you know, the one idea that you want to meet people with is sort of the abstract of your presentation, what should come up immediately, that this is what I have done. Right? Outline is not really necessary. You know, the outline of my presentation is first I am going to talk to you about this, then I am going to talk to you about this, and then I am going to talk to this, and at the end I will conclude. <laughs> uh, maybe if you really have to give the outline on the title slide itself, you can just put a little outline in. So it's easy to remember. Okay? Important thing is background or motivation. Just remember that you are probably speaking to a very diverse audience. A very diverse audience who is, uh, may not be in your area. And you know, if you suddenly go into telling them, you know, I can tell you why I feel that it is extremely important that an isotropic strain be considered when you are discussing the lattice parameter measurement of, you know, distorted wood type unit cells. Uh, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough, right? That makes sense. Okay. On the other hand, if I can tell you that, look, you know, today we are planning to replace lamps with LEDs. And in LEDs, Many times the color of the LED changes because there is strain in the material. And unless I can tell you that how I can measure the strain, it's important to be able to measure the strain and hence it's important to come up with a procedure to measure strain in such structures which are good size structures and they have an isotopic strain, then you can read out your stuff. Okay. But it's important to somehow motivate what you are doing. Otherwise if you just come and directly go bang into the thing, it's going to be very difficult for people to uh, follow what you are doing. Methods. In a short 20 minute talk, you are unlikely to be able to go through the entire protocol that you followed to do your measurements, right? In that case, it's probably better to have it handy somewhere. Okay, if somebody asks, give that information. Okay, otherwise I can tell you that, you know, all the x-ray different reflection that I took in order to measure the lattice parameter, that's possible. But then spend so much time that you miss the important part just because you are discussing the procedure, you know, which particular chemical, the, what the concentration was. The main thing is results. And present the key results. Don't bother going through every step of the thing. Just decide these are the important results. This is what I'm going to highlight and stick to those. Okay? Just, again, no large deal with the numbers. And have a few slides ready. You know, in, sometimes if you're a smart speaker, what you will do is you will see that when I'm giving the results, after I show this slide, it's going to be obvious. The obvious question is, oh, why didn't you measure that? Right? Now you can do two things. You can say, okay, clearly in order to measure uh, this, I must measure not only the symmetric direction but also the skew symmetric direction and here is the skew symmetric data. On the other hand, you can dangle the weight. Intentionally leave out that thing which you know that this is important. But you leave it out because then you are tempting the guy to ask the question, but don't you need to measure skew symmetric direction? Yeah, of course. Yeah. You know? So then it's like you kind of tempt. It's always good. People want to make you feel happy. 
nobody likes to, you know, give a tough time to this people. They are not arguing. Right? And they feel good that they have asked you a question and they have got a nice answer to it. So lead them into the path of asking these questions. Okay? Do remember that we are also smart enough to figure out these things. <laughs> now usually, all that is the good part. Now often what happens is something like this. You know, you are tapped in a room like this and the speaker goes on and on and on. 45 minutes, very long, very long. Subjectively, the material is a slide. Bullets burst out from all directions, etc., etc. Right? What do you want to do? You want to think, you know, is there going to be chai outside or coffee outside? Uh, you know, you want to somehow see if you can tip the power supply and shut the projector off. <laughs> but tell the guy, boss, boss, okay, I shut up. Okay, but you can't do that. This phenomenon is called power point. <laughs> In the good old days, a PowerPoint was only the stuff in the wall where you put a plug in, but today PowerPoint is much more than that. It allows you to actually do that kind of interesting things. So actually it's, you know, I think it's a good thing. It's really nice. Today it's unthinkable that you could do some of the things you can with PowerPoint and explain things the way you could do if you were only limited to paper in your slides or a blackboard. Right? Some things, even if you're trying to see how a laser beam is going to go through something, the path of a light ray, it's amazing what you can do with animation. However, unfortunately, it is also equally amazing to see how much has been put into power. The different options that are available, they are mind-boggling. Right? And the default option is often not the simplest one. Okay. And, you know, it's a computer system, it's on Windows, so... <laughs> so, uh, Patterson re recently updated his website with seven commandments for avoiding PowerPoint business. These are Patterson seven commandments. We'll look at some examples of these. Thou shalt not use all the colors of the rainbow. Thou shalt not consort with clip art. Okay. Thou shalt not make the text fly. Thou shalt not read off the screen. Thou shalt not assume the audience has 20 20 vision. Thou shalt not put thy faith in machines. And finally, thou shalt not fear dark. All of them make sense except the last one perhaps. People have worked with before, I think already. <laughs> Why do you put in uh, thou shalt not fear darkness? See, sometimes you know, I you really want people to listen, look and listen and listen to you rather than look at the screen. And there's a very nice feature in PowerPoint. If you press B, it blanks the screen out. And this then enables people to listen to talk to you and have your attention rather than you're looking at the screen where something's happening. Right? So if you press B, you can blank the screen out, and that's a very useful option. When you're told. And you can press anything to get back. Um, and uh, you know, PowerPoint has all these fancy things which actually uh, allows you to. Uh, you know.